Hey there, and let's get to it. Today we're going to be looking at the composite mode section at the top of the inspector and generally talking about transparency. Composite modes are an industry standard, so they're not unique to DaVinci. And what they are is a series of calculations that you can apply to one image in order to blend it with another image that's on a lower track or layer. So when it's normal and nothing's going to happen, it means that everything is going to be opaque. Uh, if I was to grab another clip and drag and drop it on top of video one, I can now start going through the compositing modes. For the most part, they're all going to look like the footage is being blended into each other. But the way it's being blended is different each time. And that's because they're based on mathematical algorithms. With some of these options, the upper range of the luminance is going to be targeted in the image. Uh, so then anything that's white is going to be blended in straight away, whereas darker elements are going to be left out. Or vice versa, if you use one of the more light-based ones, like add or screen, then it's the upper range of the luminance that's going to take over the image. You have access to descriptions of all these modes and the mathematical formula behind them online, so you can check it out if you really want to get to know them. I found that having a superficial understanding of how these work is enough because they do act very differently based on the image that you use and the footage that you're blending into. Now you might be thinking to yourself, well, Dario, why are you showing us this? This doesn't look very practical. I'm not making a music video in the 90s. What can I possibly apply this to in this day and age? Well, the happy news is that there's actually quite a wide range of application to composite modes, especially when it comes to compositing visual effects elements or stylization using solid matte colors. So if I go back to my toolbox and I bring out a solid color and I throw it in the top track, so remember, one of the elements has to be on top of something else in order for blending to work. You have to give a matte some sort of hue, so I'm just going to go for cerulean. And when I start going through the blending modes, you can see that I'm getting some very interesting effects. So I can very easily create a monochrome effect by going into multiply. Uh, then there's a monochrome with emphasis on the luminance via screen. Soft light gives you a bit of a lens filter effect. And if you look underneath, you have your opacity controls, so you still have the option of changing the visibility of the solid color. So I could bring it down slightly and blend it with the original footage so it's no longer as prominent. So then you can give it a bit of a vintage look using this one matte layer. When it comes to compositing graphics or VFX, it's pretty much the same. I've got a folder full of different graphical elements, courtesy of Andrew Kramer's Video Copilot series. And I'm just going to bring in a few short clips and see what I can do to integrate them into the scenes. So I've got this really wonderful Atmos on a black background, and I can just drag and drop it on top of my scene. And of course, because the current composite mode is normal, it's not going to blend in. But as soon as I select the clip, and I specify a different blending mode. Uh, now add is a bit extreme, you can see it's really blowing out the image, but if I go for maybe something like screen, it tends to look a lot more realistic and it doesn't push the luminance as much. So then if I play this forward, see I've now got this nice smoky atmosphere with the cars passing in front of it. And if I hide it, you can see that's the original. When it comes to elements that contain colors, it's more or less the same thing. Uh, in this case, you want to get rid of a black background. If you've got something on a green background, you probably want to chroma key uh, later on inside the color page. But in a black background, compositing tends to work pretty well. I think the explosion here looks a little bit too transparent, so I could then go through all my different types of blending modes and see if something works better. I think maybe the add works better in this case and then I would ideally want to play around with the colors to make sure it matches the environment, and I want to track it to the environment so that it's not just floating in midair as the camera bobs up and down. But yeah, play around with the opacity a bit to bring that down as well. Alright, thank you very much for watching, and until next time.